Right, today I'm going to be doing a return to home test with the DJI Mavic 3 Pro. Just testing out the accuracy of the return to home feature. I'm going to hit the screen recording for you so you can see the artificial intelligence flight path home as that looks rather cool. And then just as it's coming into land, the camera will rotate downwards and then you'll see another AI shadow drone. And that's going to mark out exactly where the drone needs to land. I'm going to be doing the test in a large field. I'm doing that so it's away from houses, cars and people. As if anything did go wrong, it's only going to drop in a field. So it's just a few hundred metres down this path. I'm going to set the drone up, hit the screen recording, and then you're going to see exactly what I see. And then we're going to hit that return to home. And fingers crossed it's going to come straight back to where I launched it from. Today I'll be using the DJI RC Pro. It's just a better remote overall. So let's get the drone set up and get on with the return to home. Should have got a strimmer. When you're coming out in fields like this, which is just totally overgrown, it's always best to do this because as the drone's coming in and it clips some of these, it can ruin your props. It's just good practice to always do this when you're out in the field. That way, you're not going to get your props damaged. Right, these launch pads are a must when you're out in the field. As you can see, what I've just had to do to clear that. Now you can imagine if I didn't have this, it's a real headache. And on these launch pads, you've got north, east, south and west. Now that's going to come in handy if your drone does take off, so you can report which way it was flying. So when I put these launch pads down, I always make sure I know where north, east, south and west is. So then when I set the drone off, I know exactly where it's going to be flying. So today I'm going to be flying south. I'll get the drone up as high as I can get it, 120 metres. We're going to send it a few hundred metres that way, hit the return to home. And then let's just see what happens. I'm hoping it lands exactly where you can see it. So it's going to take off from that exact point as you can see, and hopefully the artificial intelligence is going to land exactly where it took off from. So let's get the drone up to a maximum altitude of 120 metres, 400 feet, and let's fly it south. Here we go. Take I can still see the drone from where I am, it's in line of sight, it's a nice clear day. So now the drone's at 730 metres, I can still see the drone, it's within line of sight, it's at maximum altitude, and now I'm going to hit the return to home button, and you'll see what I see. And it should land exactly where I took off from. Fingers crossed. Return to home. As I've just said before, if you're doing any tests like this, just make sure you're flying across fields basically, because if anything were to happen and it does drop down, as you can see below, it's just grassy areas, so nothing's going to get injured. The drone's not going to be in good condition, but that's better than landing on a car or even worse, a person. If you can hear that, the drone's just above me now. I'll just get the camera up, see if you can see. There we go. Now the camera's facing down, it's finding its home point. Fingers crossed. Oh, slightly off. Slightly off. No, we've got to intervene. So basically, it was going to land there. I guess that was at least 60 to 70 centimetres away, I'd say. So that's not what I was hoping for. If I just hover it down here, I won't land there, but as you can see, that's how far away it is from it. So now I'll just manually land this. Landing. 
So that's the position that I was hoping for. So that's where I wanted it to land. And as you can see, if I let that automatically land, it was gonna land. I'll just turn the camera around. If I'd have let that land on its own there, it was gonna land exactly there. That was quite handy that being here. <laughs> I've not brought this from home. I just found it in the field next to these tires. That's exactly where it were. But it came in handy. I mean, who puts tires in the middle of this field? There's just nothing. All the way around, it's just nothing. Makes you wonder how they even got here. Anyway, that being said, so that were a pretty interesting test to be fair. I am being a little bit hard on the DJI software as the drone was gonna land within at least two or three feet away from where it took off from, which isn't that bad really. And if you think about it, if that's a tarmac surface or concrete, then it's totally fine. It's just when you're in this kind of terrain, it's not fine. But I really was hoping it was gonna land exactly where I took off from. Well, as you've just seen today, that's a real world test completed. It's not as accurate as I would like it, but it is good enough. And when you are doing these tests, it's always good to set that return to home point at least 100 meters. That way it's gonna clear trees, buildings, or anything in your surrounding area, basically, unless you're in Dubai. <laughs> it's really cool to see the AI flight path. It's like a invisible roller coaster in midair. And then just as it's about to land, the camera tilts down. And then on the screen, you'll see another AI drone shadow. And that should be exactly where the drone's gonna land. So that really did help me out there, as I could see when it was time to intercept and then land it manually. Without that, it'd be difficult to see exactly where it was gonna land. So that's a good feature. So that's the end of the real world test video today. I hope you enjoyed it. It got a bit scary at times there. If I'd not intercepted it, we're gonna go straight into the long grass, which was at the side, just a couple of feet away. But as I said, it were good enough. So that brings me to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Bye for now.